Okay, it's okay. All right, uh, welcome to another session of the Governance Education Learning Session. Um, today's uh, speaker and lead will be Ed from Wonderverse, who will be talking about the new feature that they're offering in terms of gated governance. Welcome, Ed. The floor is yours. Welcome. Yeah, th 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 thanks for having me. Um, yeah, so just a super quick intro before like, I go into a quick presentation uh, and a demo. Um, so uh, today, um, I, I, we have uh, from Wonderverse, uh, Andros, uh, who's one of the co-founders, uh, and, and myself, uh, Ed. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll, I'll give a super quick intro, and then maybe Andros can give his intro, and then I can uh, go into the presentation. Um, so yeah, like my, my name is Ed. Um, I work on partnerships uh, with Andros. Um, so uh, yeah, and like for, for partnerships, um, I help with uh, partnership uh, the partners onboarding support um, as well as uh, co-creating uh, with uh, the partners who use uh, wonder on different features and uh, different ways of uh, improving the effectiveness and efficiency of um, the end-to-end -end processes um, I, I mean we'll, we'll get into it in, in a minute but um, you know DAOs come in all shapes and sizes um, and by working really closely with them and building something collaboratively um, can we build uh, features that uh, suit the needs of uh, the partners that, that use our product. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's kind of like a approach that we take. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll uh, give it to, to Andros to introduce himself. Yeah, thanks, Ed. Um, that's a great overview. And um, yeah, I, I, hey, everyone, I'm Andros. I'm one of the co-founders of, of one of us. Um, you know, for a little bit of context, we basically build the coordination layer for Web3 teams uh, to succeed. Uh, that includes like helping DAOs, NFT projects, you know, creates communities, protocols, you know, L1 ecosystems, L2 ecosystems to basically manage um, proposals, which turns into managing projects and tasks, and then like sort of managing contributors, helping them get paid, helping them find opportunities, helping them um, yeah, earn reputation as, as well. Uh, and yeah, so far we've worked with you know almost 300 web organizations at this point uh, with people like Gitcoin, DODX, Bankless DAO, Merit Circle, etc. Um, and we have you know almost 20,000 people on the platform. So really excited to be here to like think about you know what the next stage of governance might be. I think a lot of us are still trying to figure this out. And so yeah excited to see um, you know the types of discussions that we can have and and see how we can build for the future. Cool. Thanks, Andros. Okay, so uh, I'm going to share my screen, and then we're going to go into the presentation. Uh, so, let me share my screen. Okay. Uh, let me know if you can see my my screen. We can see your screen. Is oh, there okay, a way cool. to awesome. make it more um, full screen? Uh, I think I can do slideshow. Okay, do you, do you see this as full screen right now? Yes. Okay, cool, awesome, cool. Um, yeah, so um, as uh, as Andros was saying, uh, you know, Wonder uh, is the coordination layer for Web3 uh, organizations. Um, like, uh, as, as we know in Web3, um, a, there's a wide variety of governance modes and, uh, and DAO types. Uh, it's because uh, DAOs and NFT projects come in all shapes and sizes, uh, as well as maturities. Um, and so um, we don't think that there is really like a uh, you know one size fits all type of type of operations. Um, I think uh, flexibility and uh, and customizability is uh, is very important to ensure uh, effective and, and efficient operations. Um, with with that in mind, like from from my understanding, um, governance is is very tightly coupled with operations. Uh, they kind of go hand in hand. Uh, governance is uh, typically um, upstream of operations because you know based on the decisions um, as well as discussions uh, stemming from governance it will lead to operations and uh, you know what direction the the DAO or NFT project uh, will take um, and so that will lead to you know actions that are taken by the members of that community um, and so um, you know as we mentioned uh, Wonder helps these Web3 organizations manage their end-to-end -end workflow um, and uh, ensuring that like governance uh, really flows well into operations, um, and so um, this—I mean, this concept is—is is not ours. Like we we borrowed it from uh, some from partners, 
Um, but recognizing that um, governance uh, is tightly coupled with operations, which is tightly coupled with uh, payments and, and reputation, um, it isn't quite a uh, linear flow. Uh, there is, you know, um, it, it is a, a two-way uh, a a two flow and influence. Um, and, you know, from, from what we've seen, like organizations sort of um, think about um, uh, contributors or members of the community in, in three types uh, or three concentric circles. Um, in the very middle, there's this core team, uh, typically, you know, like five to 10 uh, folks that are working on a particular project um, full time. Uh, there's a high degree of trust because, you know, uh, typically you already know uh, who they are. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you work very closely and you build like day to day. Um, with uh, with the rest of the core team on what the on what the product does, and then the the next uh, the next uh, circle uh, is the core contributors, and these might be about you know 10, uh, 10 to twenty uh, contributors who um, you know are an uh, integral part of building out the product, um, and uh, they might be working on this uh, full time or they might be working on on this uh, part time, um, but uh, they are more considered like contributors rather than uh, like the, the core core team. And then finally, like the, the third uh, circle would be uh, like a community member. Um, so these might be folks that aren't, um, they may or may not actively uh, build uh, the, the product, uh, but what they do contribute is, um, you know, community engagement, uh, feedback on, on how the product is doing. Uh, these could be the end users um, and in, Possibly, like you know, one of the more important things they do is contribute to uh, the vibe of the community um, and and the product, uh, which will influence like the the, the product decision. And so, um, from what we've seen, uh, organizations are always trying to move, um, you know, folks from the outer uh, circle as, as as much as they can to the inner circle, uh, because that will lead to you know uh, more engagement. Uh, from from the community member, um, and it's always great to to get people um, you know to uh, to contribute to your project, uh, but also uh, you know believe in the vision of, of of what you're working on, because then you'll have more and more uh, supporters uh, and and folks that um, you know really believe in in your project. Um, and so um, the governance um, the governance feature that uh, I'm just going to uh, quickly talk about today um, is uh, gated governance. Um, so within Wonder, um, there's there's a few ways of introducing gated governance. Um, so back when uh, I mentioned that you know like there's a lot of flexibility uh, with with Wonder, um, there's there's different ways of introducing gated governance. Um, one of the, like to begin with, uh, you know you can create uh, roles uh, and pods. Pods being you know like sub DAOs or, or guilds, um, depending on you know your preferred terminology. But essentially, it's a collection of um, of contributors that work towards a common goal. Um, so they could be um, they could be functional, like engineering, um, or they could be around a concept or, or a particular project. Um, so like we have a a pod around uh, the Kikon funding round um, GR15 uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, because we're uh, the sponsors of the most uh, recent round. Um, but essentially, uh, yeah, a collection of people working towards a common goal. Um, as well as uh, roles, um, and so like Wonder uh, enables organizations to uh, create roles that are very flexible um, to reflect like how DAOs are are structured. Um, so uh, and and we'll we'll get into an example um, uh, af after these uh, few slides. But you'll see that um, it's a little bit small, but I'll I'll make sure that the that the uh, the demo is is larger. But you'll see that like these are very like nuanced or uh, very specific actions that uh, these roles can um, uh, can can take, um, and so um, that that just like provides flexibility for DAOs of um, of all sizes, um, or even as they evolve, uh, to be able to um, effectively um, you know run operations and ensure that the roles match to uh, what what their responsibilities are. Um, the other uh, the other uh, part of gated governance um, is that we also support proposals um, at the sort of like the the DAO level, but also at the pod level. Um, so with Wonder, like members can uh, create proposals that are approved or rejected by soft consensus. Um, so here you'll see that it's you know you can vote for or against a proposal, and if something calls for it, you can uh, export it to snapshot 
uh, for more um, you know formal or on-chain voting. Um, and so uh, and then once once they're approved, they become tasks or projects um, in the workspace that you can assign uh, contributors uh, to work on and even attach an award to it, a reward to it. Um, and so um, that that is that coupling between um, uh, governance and, and operations. Um, so I guess uh, like why like why we're building uh, these these governance uh, features um, is that you know governance is uh, decision making or group decision making. Uh, there's so to us like there's there's two parts. One is uh, setting goals and objectives. Uh, which is the the what like what are we trying to achieve like what are what is what is our mission what is our goal um, and then the second is you know like how do you how do you set the strategy um, like what are the actions um, that you're going to take in order to achieve um, the goals and objectives and there's there's different types of uh, operational decisions like they could be um, ad hoc they could be ongoing um, or they could be building on uh, existing programs um, but all all these are decision making um, so. Uh, it's important to be able to um, um, have two-way conversations uh, about this is the direction that um, our our organization is, is taking on a particular topic, um, and it's important to be able to provide feedback um, from from end users, from the community members, um, to the core team uh, on you know what uh, what it is that they're working on. Um, I think I heard a few like beeps, um, but I can't actually see a chat. So if if there are any questions like um, yeah, if you want to, like, just like, uh, I, I, I don't, sorry, I, I don't know how the format should be. Like, if we answer questions at the end, or uh, if if you want me to answer questions, like, as as we go, um, yeah, that that's totally that's totally cool too. Yeah. Um, so I I think it's always like good to have like a pause um, in between to allow some questions. Um, I had one, but um, I would like to yeah. give Gino the opportunity first. Because you, you sure. said that you had a question, if you wanted to ask that. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was about like an implementation aspect on the on the on the like the token governance concept. If you were thinking of doing something uh, standard space like soul bound tokens or things like that, but I think we can discuss it on the next part of the of the talk. Sure. Okay. Um, and so, in regards to mine, it was more about. Um, if you could take me through your like real life process flow. So like I understand that Wonderverse had begun as like a project management, right? Um, and so that's where decisions are already going to be made on a project level, like what everybody needed to do and what pods they needed to go in. Now taking it onto the governance level, like what is the stock gap that you saw in order to develop this feature in that project management process flow? Um, or like in what kind of need were you sort of fulfilling in which you saw that the ways that people were kind of managing their project, there needed to be some sort of tiered level of decision-making in order for those projects to progress. Uh, yeah, so, um, uh, oh, and, and, and it draws, like, you know, feel free to, to jump in um, whenever, um, so, yeah, like I, I think the genesis of, of this is that um, yeah, because we started um, with uh, helping Web three organizations manage their um, their workflow. Um, so you know, like we we created um, something familiar to um, to a lot of users, which is like a Kanban board. Um, and so um, that was that was a great way to organize. Like these are the things that you that you need to work on. Um, these are some of your top priorities, uh, especially um, when when we created. Uh, in such a way that you can see all the things you need to do um, across the different DAOs you're part of. Um, and so like we were attempting to reduce that friction uh, for contributors um, to contribute to DAOs, but also reduce the friction for operators and uh, admins to easily know uh, what what is waiting on their decision um, because you know like you don't want to um, you know like wake up in the uh, in, in the morning and and kind of go like, hey, what? Um, like, what is it that I need to do again? Um, you want to be able to, you know, quickly see, um, you know, like everything you need to do uh, in one place. Um, and we think that that reducing that friction will help with that. Um, and, and I think, like, by recognizing that, um, you know, the 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 tasks um, that you needed to do um, stemmed from, you know, somewhere. 
Um, so then, you know, like we, we, we looked at like what is upstream of, you know, like putting down like what task it is um, that you need to work on or you're assigning someone else. Um, and usually that is um, stemming from um, a possibly like governance decision, uh, which is, um, you know, setting setting object goals and objectives um, as well as setting the strategy um, of like you know how how you're going to go about uh, meeting the goals and objectives um, and so like if we were to build um, like features that support that process as well then um, you know we make it uh, more seamless for uh, for teams to then you know set these goals and objectives um, and as well as like creating these like um, these strategies or, or the how um, flowing Flowing into um, uh, flowing into tasks, then uh, teams uh, will have less friction uh, from from end to end to exact to know exactly what they uh, what they need to work on, uh, because like recognizing the operations uh, is is downstream of, of governance. Uh, it's really important to for us um, to understand like what like how do how do teams make decisions, um, and uh, like what are some of the governance mechanisms that are really important. Um, I don't think that like we're we're, we've set out to like, like you know, like become um, the, the the tool to um, uh, to replace a lot of like you know decision making for teams. But I think like we want to build features that make it easy for teams to like set some of these goals and objectives and uh, and strategy. Um, I don't know, yeah. Andros, if you want to. Yeah, I was just gonna say that like basically we were observing that you know. Um, uh, a lot of teams have this idea of like they do a temperature check somewhere um and then people get to vote on said temperature check for like specific you know f features or maybe it's just like a, an idea maybe it's like an improvement to an onboarding process or something and um you know either in that process people then like put down to a snapshot vote or like people just decide to work on something um and that's exactly what the flow that we support is it's like there's a temperature check there's like a discussion um functionality on on one of us and then um yeah you can do some closed voting and the closed vote is actually important because like even on discord you can actually see who voted for what and like obviously that brings a lot of inherent bias into things and i think the idea too is that like not everything needs to be like uh, a vote that requires snapshot you know like a lot of smaller things especially if it's like specific to a pod or a guild like actually just need some sort of self consensus um so you know, the idea is to directly correlate like a proposal to something that can be exactly worked on and executed, which is like a, a project or a task. So, yeah. So there's one more question. In tiered voting for governance, can people earn higher tiers by successfully doing certain tasks on the Kanban board or the task board? yeah so you you can make it so that like once someone has completes more and more things um they can actually earn a new role and like you can gate each task by role there are actually multiple types of like gating that can happen for a role um you know um so you know that is possible so, so this role would it be on discord or would it be like uh linked with that first identity He said, uh, sorry, was it was the question? Would it be on Discord or would it be? I think that the second part was on the platform. Raj, correct me if I'm wrong. What was the second location? Uh, would it would it like would it would it be bounded with a person's identity, like with their wallet address, or would it be platform specific to Wonderverse? Like, would it be an NFT or something that I can show even if I'm not using Wonderverse, or it will show only on Wonderverse or only on Discord? Because if I can show it uh, around, right, that I've done certain tasks over here and I've, mm -hmm. I've earned this uh, level of uh, reputation, and if I can show it in some other time, then that makes more sense. Yeah, I think. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, yeah, I was, I was just going to say, um, yeah, so um like with with wonderverse um like when you like when you complete tasks or when you join when you join DAOs, um or or nft projects um you know like we, we do have um profiles of of users um and so like from that um it, it essentially like building up your um your web3 resume 
And from that, uh, your your account on, on Wonder, um, you could either connect your wallet to it, um, you can uh, sign up with Discord, uh, or you can sign up with email. Um, so like, yeah, there's different ways of like tying it to um, whichever identity you're um, you're using, like in order to build up this, um, you know, like these these uh, like experiences and, and web through resume. Um, and yeah, like I I can, I can I can show that like after on like how how it's done. Yeah, and um, we do have this idea of a leaderboard, and it's actually time series based. Um, yeah. But also, like I think it's important to yeah. So the, the task that will show up actually it depends on the privacy of the task. Like it's really important to us that like you know. A contributor might want to show something off but like you know the organization itself might be like well this isn't a private pod or a private task mm -hmm. so you can only see specific um, information uh, about it if it's not like public can i ask a question yes oh yeah of course awesome hey guys thanks for the presentation this is awesome um wow. uh from a yeah kind of like following up on the identity question um how are you guys i guess managing the data uh that you guys are collecting so when somebody signs up with their email um and you you uh there's a community that wants to create maybe a token uh granted role or like token granted access to a, a given task or a channel um, that user would be required to hook up their wallet address, right? So how are you guys uh, associating those two things on, on the back end? And is, do you guys have access to it? Or uh, yeah, just like what, um, how are you guys managing that data? Yeah, so currently, um, so yeah, everything is, is stored on. Um, so the email is optional. You can log in with multiple different ways. You can do it by Discord, by just like a wallet, um or like optionally you can add your email it's kind of like open c um but yeah like currently we sort of store all the information on a database um we by no means require anyone to use their email um or any kind of identifier like you can just log in with like a wallet um and that's how you would get around the token gating stuff like actually yeah, email is just one of the options and then um th that that kind of mapping, I guess, that you're doing, uh, I, I assume there's some some way of protecting, uh, I guess, like the mapping between a wallet address and their email address, right? Uh, just like yeah. thinking from the perspective, if there was an exploit, uh, you don't, you won't want to dox users, right? Um, no, I also no. do, do not know much from the like infrastructure security side, so just yeah, raising these questions from my naive. Uh, perspective yeah definitely like we've we've you know there's you know we, we have a whole privacy policy on like obviously protecting user data and everything so um yeah i think i think like we and obviously eventually we will like do more things like you know put data on more decentralized infra um you know but um currently that's just like a, on the roadmap um, you can continue, and <laughs> sure. yeah. governance. Uh, yeah. Um, so I just want to touch on this, like super, super quickly. Um, I think, like, uh, yeah, like one one of the things that we're we're looking at uh, more closely as well right now, because like it's um, it, it is tied to or is closely tied to governance, um, is uh, is grants um, and looking at it from like the internal versus like external perspective. Um, so we've we've been doing this because, like, you know, we recognize that, um, you know, we we built out this this um, gated governance um, features because, like, it it supported the um, the operation flow, um, but, uh, operations workflow. But grants is also like an important aspect because, you know, like that that is how. Um, so, like before, when I said like governance is coupled with um, with operations, which is coupled with payments and and uh, and reputation. Um, and so, like grants is the the payments part. Um, and so, uh, you know, like we're 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 trying to like in conversations with uh, different organ different organizations or different individuals, um, you know, uh, with uh, related to grants. Um, you know, like we kind of identified like several um, several challenges uh, around uh, internal versus external uh, grants um, that you know that I listed here. Um, so the, the way we see it is that um, I, I say internal grants, uh, but really um, I, I think um, 
Like we, we think of it as more of like a budgeting process of uh, internal teams or, or pods uh, in, in this case, you know, asking for uh, for funding. Um, let's say, you know, your, your marketing your marketing team or marketing pod is requesting, uh, you know, budget allocation to run particular projects. Um, so like that to us is kind of, you know, like in a way like a grant process. Um, and then external is more around um, uh, engaging your community to uh, work on initiatives and programs that um, will help with the growth and acceleration of 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 your of your um, of your product or your protocol. Um, and so, uh, yeah, these these are some of the the challenges that we that we've heard. Um, like uh, from some from an internal perspective, you know, one thing about um, you know like because I mentioned that the core team there is a high level of trust. Um, but you know, one of the challenges is that um, you know funding requests are seen as formality because of, of implicit trust, um, and so like um, like oftentimes like there is a lack of like supporting documentation and ballparking of like funding funding estimates. Um, there's there's also like issues around uh, progress tracking of like you know like are you like sixty percent done or eighty percent done like where are we with uh, certain things. Um, as well as um, you know, like a, a lack of accountability. So if you don't hit uh, you know things that or targets that you set out for yourself, like related to the funding, then you know like what 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 happens? Um, and and we've heard of stories where uh, you know like people uh, miss their targets, um, but you know like nothing happens. But if nothing happens, then um, you know like in the future uh, it is more difficult to. Uh, ensure that like teams will actually work towards the goals that they've set for themselves, um, and so like from from here like you know we are um, like we already have some features in place um, that we're gonna look to refine on and even just even use like some of these conversations as temperature checks um, on making sure like we're building right things. Um, but you know like for for us like we have things like uh, milestones um, as well as like uh, yeah associating like tasks um, and projects to milestones. Um, and like just making it more visible um, for uh, for operators to see like how how things are going um, from an exper external perspective. Um, like some of the things that we often hear is uh, issues related to you know free form proposals. Um, what I mean by that is like there's really no um, like set standard structure uh, for for writing up grants. Um, and that causes a lot of headache because you know it's kind of hard to um, sort of like uh, like, judge one one pr proposal uh, from another uh, as it relates to uh, impact if they're both written very differently. Um, there's there's another there's another one where um, you know like we're, we're hearing stories of you know like uh, a number of um, proposers uh, applying to just like all available grants. Uh, sometimes like uh, you know like they don't like originally like they, they didn't have um, intentions to um, uh, to specifically build on a particular like platform or or, or protocol, um, but they just applied because they heard that you know there's there's grants available. Uh, I mean you know like that that just like causes other problems itself. But um, another another one that we heard is just like assessment of the capabilities, uh, similar to um, even just like our uh, our tasks and and, and bounties. Um, uh, work, uh, as part of the workflow, um, there is difficulties to determine, like you know, execution capabilities um, when people apply for for grants. Um, and then I think another one is just transparency um, of funding, uh, like where the where the funding will go. Um, so you know, like we we've heard like um, like two major buckets, of course, is like you know, human capital, um, as uh, or sorry, yeah, human capital, but also like just capital in general. Um, I, I I think it's like especially. Um, when a majority of it is actually like towards like rewarding contributors for for their time, um, it's it's difficult to um, you know to say like you know we we need this much for for this because um, of like I don't know X number of hours, uh, which which can be like uh, it could be a very wide range or it could be very volatile. So, but yeah, like these these are some these are some of the things that like we've heard through discussions, um, and so um, we are looking to um, address some of these things. Um, in in support of the governance flow, um, but yeah, just wanted to share uh, share these points uh, with everyone. Uh, was was there a was there a question? Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So uh, bringing it back to governance, I think that what I'm also seeing that you could use it for is elected positions, particularly like grants committee. So what I've also seen is that 
um, when majority of the grants are being assessed, it's from a committee um, and there's really not like checks and balances to see like whether or not that grants committee member has actually met all of their requirements that they were elected for and how they're really gonna decide um, how to select particular grants. Um, I do see the need for recipients that have already received grants to kind of show that they've met that requirement. But I think that also from elected positions and delegated um, positions as well, like as like delegated proxy voters, um, this could also be used. And so I just don't mean to like throw a wrench, but um, wanted just to see like, what were your thoughts on, or how would you see elected roles, whether it's like somebody in a governance committee or a particular delegate that has been like elected to be a delegate can actually use your tool um, to showcase the similar things as a recipient from a grant. Sorry, if I just want to understand correctly, you're just you're talking about whether the elected officials would be able to demonstrate how mm -hmm. useful they've been as mm -hmm. or do you mean like oh, okay instead of yeah like, yeah yeah so like imagine if this was like a time sheet right like so like every elected official like the delegate or grants committee is actually present provided a certain amount of seasonal funding right so it's like where the money comes from but there's really no clear platform or way for members who've elected them to actually see the work that they've done um and so like what you mm -hmm. just described could be a use case for that as well and so i just oh, kind yeah. of wanted to explore that for a hot second because yeah. i mean we've been talking about doubt like delegated voting and like you know there's a lack of really transparency yeah. and you know we have grants people receiving grants, but where there's really no checks and balances for the grants committee as in general. So yeah, just tying it yeah. back. <laughs> I mean, I <laughs> think that's really, yeah, that's really interesting. I think for us, you know, obviously um, we do have like a, a reviewer sort of like who will be assigned to reviewing grants or like specific people. And so, you know, I think obviously being able to track how many who's been reviewing what proposals and like obviously um, kind of um, uh, approving them or whatever it might be then like uh, i think that makes sense and and maybe you know uh, that would be like a good little statistic or like a as you, we kind of mentioned like a leaderboard of like how many people have been you know reviewing proposals things like that um and giving thoughts obviously we do have like a discussion we'll have a discussion around like each grant proposal things like that um, so you'll be able to see the activity. Um, obviously, I think the what you're mentioning is like specifically like showing the statistics or the analytics around like the the actions that they've taken, which I think is really interesting. So you know, we could definitely we could definitely add that. Um, in terms of the voting, I'm yeah, I'm curious too to like learn if if like like do people need to do, should we need to count like soft votes or is it the idea that like you don't see who's voted for what, right? Like, I think that's kind of, um, at least on our platform, um, you know, but obviously if, they, if it becomes like a snapshot kind of vote, then like you can see who voted for what too, um, but yeah. Was that a question? I mean, like you can ask that as an open question. <laughs> yeah, I think that's an open, open, more open kind of question. Um, but uh, could you reframe I, I think, it if you wouldn't mind just so that yeah others... i'm just trying to understand like would you guys want to see something where like you see who voted for what and so that's like an accountability thing right because you presumably want your delegates to vote on things and obviously like you know if you want to uh, so you know it'd be interesting to see like maybe you can't see what they voted for but you can just see that they voted right um I think you responded, Sean. Did you want to just expand on that? Like why you also think, yes? Okay, to your point of like, um, I think you've got kind of an interesting piece there, which was the anonymization of the proposal and the feedback itself. But the other side of that is the result of the vote and who voted for what. I think that's important. Um, as you get into delegation, that becomes even more important because I want to know what any delegates might actually be voting for. So the more transparency you can provide, especially if the platform, and sorry, I missed that. I wasn't sure if the platform, if the voting was internal to the platform or externally, I think you could do either one. Um, but the less hops I have to make to see what, who voted for what, that's helpful.
uh, I, I would like to add some, I would like to add one point over here. Like, uh, wouldn't it be better if we know that someone voted, but who voted what? If you don't know that, isn't it better? Like, uh, isn't that the whole application of ZQ here? That we don't know that uh, who voted what, but we know that people have given their vote. So I would like to know, I would like to uh, discuss this a bit more. That what do you think? Like, is it better to know who voted what, or is it better to not know who voted what? Uh, th sorry, th this this is also like maybe like an open question too, but um, but but perhaps like uh, it doesn't have to be like either or, right? Um, maybe it's a case of like uh, like I I I, th I think the benefits of like having this being a closed vote um, is that you know like during the voting process, uh, you're not influenced by, you know, like, let's say, um, you know, if someone very influential in, in the DAO or, or in, on the project, uh, if they vote one way, everyone else is going to, you know, vote the same. Um, but um, there's there's nothing to, to say, like, we can't show, like, what, what are the votes, like, after, um, like, after the, the poll has been closed, right, to say that, like, you know, um, yeah, because because by by then um, the influence is gone already because the 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 decision has been made on on where uh, where like that proposal that proposal lands. Um, I don't know if that would be would be useful because then you you kind of you know still get the benefits of the closed voting, but then you know you still have the accountability um, aspect uh, at the end. Okay, so I'll I mean, jump in. Sorry. I, my I was just gonna say I just said sorry. I, I was just gonna say that I agree. I think it's it's twofold, right? Um, I think it's really important, not in the during the process, but like to know that who voted, especially when you're in a smaller group. Um, I think when things are just like much larger, that doesn't really matter as much. But like as you know, like on right. snapshot, you kind of already know who voted what. I mean, especially if you know people's wallets. And so that could also be a retractive thing. But um, I think that there's this like decentralization and an anonymity has not really added much more trust in the voting process or much more increased engagement. So I think that this at least allows us an opportunity to kind of explore different ways to see what mm -hmm. works for each community. Um, because I think that like governance decisions should be like one size fits all. So there's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Sean, go ahead. <laughs> Thanks, Vim. Sorry for stepping on you there. So um, I agree. I'm starting to sense that our DAOs are too influenced by whales and for major thought, thought leaders. And if a major thought leader says X, Y, Z, 90% of the people are going to just follow them and not think about it. And if we can provide a little bit of shielding so that we get more input, better input, less influence by a person's number of followers and more influence on the idea that is powerful. Now, Ed, to the question of, I, I, it could be customized, like, you know, flip it on, flip it on. If in my DAO, if that's important, I turn it on. If it's not important, turn it off. But I would default to um, over transparency, the ability for over transparency and the ability to um, put the results in one place. So the voter doesn't have to go to multiple places to see what mm -hmm. they need to see, because that just drives apathy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and I think to answer your earlier question, um, and sorry again because I, I can't see people uh, when when I share my screen, um, is is that um, the the voting does sorry the soft voting, um, the the closed voting that does take place uh, in in the platform uh, on Wonder. I know a while back, Gino, you had a question. Since we're just free flowing right now. Yeah. I wanted to provide you that opportunity to ask questions about implementation or whatever you want. Yeah, I mean, first of all, regarding this discussion, um, we've been thinking on doing shielded or like secret voting. And at least our current like train of thought is doing shielded based on the type of proposals. Like for example, for like grants or things like that, you might want to do shielded or secret voting or for example for revoking grant but maybe for another type of proposal you don't need that kind of like anonymity uh and, and that's also nice um yeah i mean my 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 question was about like the the actual implementation 
uh, we've been having conversations. I mean, we've been talking with the, with the guys at, at Wonderverse and other DAO tooling uh, products, and the community was like super um, interested in the discussion of okay, how how standards are th those products? How what's like the vendor locking, right? So that's why I wanted to ask you how were were you thinking on the on the on the flow of the implementation in terms of like what technologies to use here. Um, sorry, I was just trying to understand the question. Is the question like, what is the standard kind of governance to operations flow, or do you mean like in general what people are using? Is this an open question? Sorry. Yeah, I mean, what I'm asking is, let's say, I don't know, Adao starts using uh, Wonderverse for this, and they decided to whatever, change it or, or do any other stuff. What's, what's the technology behind the product uh, that's powering the flows. That's why I mean, snapshot is one of them, of course. But right. is there anything else that you're using that it's like more standard? Yeah. So, so I think um, yeah. So I'll I'll take a, a, a stab at it and Andrew, I'll jump in, whatever. Um, yeah. So, so like because because Wonder is uh, building the coordination layer uh, for Web three teams. Um, we're not, um, you know, uh, like we're we're not trying to replace you know snapshot. Uh, we're not trying to replace Discord. We're not trying to, you know, replace um, like GitHub, et cetera. Um, in fact, like we have uh, integrations uh, with a lot of these um, other products. Like uh, for for um, on-chain voting, we have integration of Snapshot. Uh, we have integrations of GitHub. Uh, we have integrations of Guild. Um, we have integrations of with Discord for for notifications, um, and uh, we also have. Uh, integrations uh, with uh, like task imports. Um, so like if you wanted to bring over like your uh, like if you're bringing over stuff uh, from from Notion, your, your like your tasks, you can do that um, or, or export or sorry, import from CSV. Um, but you can also um, like uh, in terms of like the, the tasks, you can also like export um, into uh, into CSV a list of all the all the things that that you've done. Um, I, I think I think we've built um, like Wonder in a very modular way, uh, such that like you know you can use Wonder for as little or as as much as as you want for 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 your DAO. Um, like some some projects like use it uh, for everything, uh, and some some use it for you know just the proposal flow. Some people use it just for like the task management. Um, but I, I think like uh, with every step of the of the way, um, I, I don't think um, there has been like a lot of uh, lock in. Because um, I think uh, one of our like uh, uh, philosophies is that you know like not only uh, you know should you be able to choose like to work on things you you feel passionate about, but I think like also the tools that you feel passionate about. Um, and so like even with our payments flow, um, you know really you're connecting with uh, Gnosis Safe, uh, Gnosis Safe uh, multisig uh, wallet, um, and then you can even choose to pay. Using Parcel or Utopia or you know off off platform, um, so we don't really force you to do one thing or another. But what we do is provide like this sort of um, uh, like unified interface, if you will, of like connecting it or integrated to uh, integrations with like different products that you're probably using in terms of um, like standard practice for Web three uh, Web three teams, um, and just like making it like easier for for people because to I think it was Sean's point um, about like having it. All in like one place, um, so that you don't have to like go to different um, like different products um, to to work on like each specific thing, and then switch back to um, you know Wonder to then update your tasks uh, because everything is uh, is integrated. Cool. Yeah, that that makes sense. Uh, orchestration is a good word for that. Like the orchestration yes. Okay. Layer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thank thank you that 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 is uh, that is a good uh, that is a good word. Um, yeah, so 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 uh, I just wanted to like quickly like go through uh, this this demo because I I think maybe that will like show um uh like like cer certain things uh, or or make make things more more clear. Um, and so like what I was saying before about um like with wonder. Uh, because like we're really playing with like the Wonderverse or like space theme. Uh, one of the th first things you see is a mission control, like when you log in. So like as a contributor, you see like all the things that you need to do across the different DAOs you're part of. So I'm part of Sample DAO, which I created. It's a fake DAO, um, as well as Wonder. 
And so like if I clicked into this, then I like like these are like my five to do's, two in progress, uh, et cetera. Um, but like like I, I see like everything um, like in a in a personal Kanban board. Uh, so like yeah, these are the things from sample DAO, these are the things from uh, from Wonder. Um, but on the flip side, like as an operator, like I see um, like membership requests for my organization, for my pods, uh, for proposals, et cetera. Um, and then like this is meant to reduce the friction uh, for uh, you know for for you to do work. Um, and so related to the 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 gated governance of uh, roles and and pods, uh, in terms of in terms of roles, like wonder um, is is built in a way that it's like very, um, very flexible in terms of in terms of roles. So by default, like there's an owner role which gives you access to everything. There's a core team role which is subset and contributor, uh, and you could even create uh, different roles. Um, and then you can like you know pick and choose like what what they have access to. But I think the the great thing is like you, you'll see that these are um, these are like specific actions. Um, I know that like some products, um, you know, like either you're a super admin or you don't have access to anything. Um, but I think like by having like these very like um, uh, like nuanced actions, then it gives you the flexibility. You know, maybe as your as your as your project uh, or DAO or, or NFT project um, evolves and and grows, then this gives you more flexibility in terms of like the di different types of roles and and tasks that um, uh, or, or actions that they can take. Um, I know that there was a question around like um, like uh, Discord and whatnot. So like each of these roles are also either you can like token gate it um, with um, ERC twenty token or NFTs. Um, so in this case, like if I have a CryptoPunk, then I'll just automatically get this core team role, um, or I can connect it to my Discord. Um, and so on my Discord server, like I have stationary lovers as a role. Um, and so um, or you can pick and choose like any other roles on your uh, on your server. So anybody with this uh, this role will automatically get access to the core team. Um, and then I can like just as easy like toggle on and off like certain actions. Um, I think I think this this is very helpful again because like as your as your team uh, evolves, um, then uh, it just makes it really easy for you to like create and uh, and assign these uh, these roles and specific actions. Um, and from 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 this like from the roles, um, you can also create uh, you can also create uh, pods as I mentioned. Um, I think so the the way that um, but Wonder is is designed is that um, because of the flexibility, um, you actually have uh, privacy and access at like three different levels. Um, like Andros mentioned this at the beginning, which is um, you can make your 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 DAO like your your workspace level uh, private or public, um, and then each individual pod can be private or public, and then the tasks or bounties um, can also be like private or public because. Um, like sample DAO right now is um, is private, um, but then there's like pods like uh, Swag Pod. Um, so if I go to Swag Pod, I'll notice like this is um, this is public, so people can actually uh, like see this the tasks that are on this board without being a member. But then for something like um, you know like strategy, right? Like you want to make sure your strategy pod is is private, um, and so like nobody can just you know see it. Um, and so, like, because of like that that nuance uh, of like different access, but also like different roles, that gives that gives teams a lot of flexibility in terms of like how to structure um, their their workspace. Um, and I think more importantly, as your um, as your DAO evolves, like whether because of like maturity or because of gro growth in in size, um, I think that gives you a lot of flexibility to uh, to structure, but also restructure uh, things as as they go along. Um, one one other thing, um, yeah. One other thing I'll show, like, and then maybe I'll pause um, for for questions or or more open ended questions, um, is the the proposal flow that I talked about before. Um, so like this was uh, this was something that we borrowed uh, from like our friends at Live Peer, uh, which was that you know off chain and off chain social consensus voting and and on chain, um, and so like uh, yeah. So with uh, with the uh, closed voting, you can just like vote uh, within within Wonder, and then uh, if like by the due date, uh, if this was passed, then you can approve it, and it'll turn into a task or a project that you can assign people to to work on. Uh, and of course, like from here, you can like you know have some discussions around it. Um, I think um, as this applies to um, uh, to pods um, as as well, like for more nuanced um, type of proposals. 
Um, so you'll see that this this one is a CRM integration, and it's actually uh, part of the the marketing pod proposal. Um, and so like uh, the folks that would be voting on this would be part of the marketing team. Um, in the future, like we could um, you know possibly like roll gate this, um, and so it's not just anybody in marketing can vote on it. It could be like you know the core team member of the marketing team. Um, but then uh, for here, like you know if you want to like the proposal to uh, issue additional tokens uh, for the strategy team. Uh, you might want to do like closed voting or like soft voting um, to begin with, just to kind of like directionally like is this even a good idea? Um, and then if 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 it passes, then you could actually export this then to snapshot um, for um, for more complex voting strategies uh, if if you choose to. Um, but yeah, like Wonder gives you like that sort of like flexibility in terms of like what to uh, like or how how you go about uh, the voting process. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe I'll pause it here. There are no questions. If I mean, because we have like less than ten minutes, I don't know if there's a last leg of your demo, and then maybe just like allow like one or two questions in reference to that. Hey, I want to jump in real quick. Uh, I'm Josh for Desi Protocol, and I did want to say thank you for the presentation. Everything was uh, very real put together. Um, just want to jump in. Did you guys? Are you guys all a part of the same team? Uh, and and, and Justin, uh, yes. Yep. Okay. Just want to double check. I want to make sure I get as much uh, contact info as possible. Uh, my team wants to like discuss the decentralized governance with you guys, and uh, yeah, just thank you for presenting to us. Yeah. Th 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 thanks for uh, yeah. Thanks for tuning in. So if there's anything, because it's not done yet, <laughs> if there's any left things left in your in your demo, Ed, uh, please feel free. Um, and then again, um, I'll like allow like one more maybe question in regards to what was just presented. And then of course we have a Telegram group. So if you'd like more conversations around that or the product, feel free to have those conversations there. Yeah, um, I think uh, I, I think that was about it. Andros, am I, am I missing anything that uh, or that I didn't cover? I, I also have to admit it's like three a.m. where I am, so like my brain might be a little bit slow uh, compared to usual. So um, yeah, so oh Andros, you're on point. <laughs> I was gonna okay. say. I I have one uh, one question. I, I'm wondering, like, what kind of um, like further integrations you're maybe looking at with uh, on-chain tooling? So, like, a Gnosis Safe, how that could maybe plug into to this mix? We we already have a yeah. We do have like a Gnosis integration, like all our payments. You know, uh, we have a payments ledger which lets you like pay out a bunch of things um, via Gnosis and and MetaMask, obviously. Um, we even have like a coordinate integration, things like that. Um, awesome. And uh, and yeah, that maybe just show the pay. Oh yeah, add wallet. And we have like a, yeah. a payments okay. ledger um, and you know, uh, what other types of, we are gonna also be releasing, um, being able to enable people to do on-chain minting of their completed milestones and tasks. So that's coming out in the next, a week or two so hoping to put more things on chain basically cool yeah this is great well thank you guys again for the demo that's my only question We're at the hour any last burning questions Fred Well, I have to say that uh, this is much more of a full house than it usually is. So I appreciate everybody's time <laughs> and coming on a Monday. Um, thank you, Ed. Thank you, Andros, for this presentation and also just allowing us to discuss creative governance in a different way. Um, next week, I was really inspired by a tweet thread by Commodore from Krause House. So he'll be talking about like how his experience in Krause House's governance and like their proposal process, which is actually really interesting. Also, just to let you know, we've heard you. So December, we haven't booked any presentation. So if there's any community members that would like to lead an open session, please DM me on a particular topic and we can definitely work together in regards to that. Sean has done it, I've done it before, super fun. 
um, just a way for us just to just connect and really just like ask each other's questions and just like temp check as well. But uh, yeah, so I will see you guys in the telegram or see you folks on the telegram um, and catch you next week. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank Take you. care. Bye. Bye.